Good morning, everyone. It's Frida. I have uh, a beef stew going into the crock pot this morning. I have to hurry. I'm in a hurry because I have a lot going on, but I'm planning to put a lot of vegetables in my beef stew. And these are all going to be low FODMAP vegetables for people who have IBSD. Uh, it should be friendly for them, uh, for most of us. And um, I'm using lean stew beef pieces and I'm using parsnips. I was, I decided to use parsnips instead of carrots because uh, both parsnips and carrots are low FODMAP. And I have um, I'm some Yukon Gold potatoes. I, what I can do, um, infuse oil with the flavor of onion and, and also the flavor of garlic. I didn't get the garlic yet. I'm going to infuse the oil with the flavor of both onions and garlics before I, I fry the beef and and then it will the flavor of onion and garlic will be in it but it turns out even cooked onions and garlics are high FODMAP so I'm learning as I go and if I change the story on any item it's because I I've uh, prac I've, I've done some experience experiments with it and found out that new information okay so I'm, I'm not trying to tell you a lie. I'm, I'm giving you updated information at some point. I know in the past I've said that cooked onions and cooked garlic don't bother me, but I, I believe they do. So now I'm going to do the, what low FODMAP uh, dietitians have told me and what I've read is, is to infuse oil with uh, the flavor of onions and garlic because uh, the 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 high FODMAP does not um, carry over through oil. It only carries over if you boil it in water. So thank you for watching, and I'm going to cut up these vegetables and get them started. Okay, I'm using avocado oil. I got this at Aldi, and I'm going to use that oil um, to in and infuse it with garlic and onion flavor. Now, I'm smelling the onion really good, and you can see that it's, uh, avocado oil burns differently than olive oil. It has a much higher smoke um, point. You can cook it at a much higher temperature before it smokes. And I did leave the peel on the garlic, but I smashed it. And I am not trying to burn the garlic. When I smell the garlic really well, I'm going to take it out. Because we do not want the taste of burned garlic in there, but we do want the oil infused. I know how to infuse oil. I've been doing it for mashed potatoes for many, <laughs> I don't know, many times. But uh, onions, I, I'm, I didn't realize I, I might be sensitive to onions. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm so disappointed. I love onions. <laughs> I love them. See how beautiful they look? I would love to put some vinegar in that some balsamic reduction vinegar and eat it <laughs> but since i'm testing and trying to figure out what i'm sensitive to and what i can do what i can handle i'm just going to take them and infuse the oil for now and i will save them because i'm sure my husband will want them later he'll fry some fish with these onions you know, there's still a lot of flavor in there And these are now infusing the oil. And I believe, yeah, the flavor is already in. I don't need more. That's enough. That's enough garlic flavor and onion flavor in, in that oil. Now I'm going to put the beef in. Okay, that's half of the beef. I'm going to do, I'm doing four pounds of beef. Um, and then the rest is going to be vegetables. Okay, there's a little bit more garlic infusing into the oil because I want to make sure I got a really good garlic smell. And I can, I use that uh, avocado oil again because that oil is the best. Um, it's better than olive oil for um, cooking. It, it uh, has a higher smoke point. So I'm using avocado oil in there. And I'm going to warm these garlics up 
yeah, gently and slowly so that I can get the flavor really nicely infused into it. Now these vegetables are ready for um, the food processor. I have celery, parsnips, butternut squash, bell peppers, and that's it, just four. four. The potatoes are already in cooking with the beef. See, the potatoes are already in. I might need to add a little bit more liquid. So, but it's already cooking. Potatoes and beef. Beef in the bottom, potatoes on top, and the rest is going in after this. But I'm going to heat it up before I put it in so it doesn't shock the meat. Meat will not get soft if it gets shocked. Okay, the most of the peppers and um, butternut squash are already ground up and they're in here. And I put a generous amount of salt on top because I haven't salted anything yet. So that's... I think I'm going to put a piece of jalapeno pepper in it. I'm not sure. I have to find out if that's low FODMAP or not. Now, I put in some of the parsnips and some of the um, celery in here. It's already ground up and more salt. Um, the salt will pull the juice out. I want to see if how much juice I can get from the vegetables before I add water. So I don't want to water it down. I want it to be fully flavored since I'm not able to use my my regular go-to which is salt, I mean onions and uh, garlics which uh, I really love and I always use a lot. But um, since I'm trying to uh, investigate and experiment and see what's causing my IBS, I'm going to leave those out for a while and see. In fact, I'm eating all low FODMAP foods for the uh, for maybe for about a month, and then I'll see after that. I, I don't know which ones are tearing me up, but I have to find out. Okay, so I found out I can use a jalapeno pepper. It is a low FODMAP, so I can add it. Now this smells really good. Parsnips smell like carrots. Carrots are low FODMAP, but I wanted parsnips for some reason. I just wanted parsnips this time because I want to diversify my diet even though it's going to be low FODMAP for a while. I haven't even had breakfast yet. I've been doing errands this morning. <laughs> That's it. Just errands. Now, this is all uh, hot. and I'm, Now that it's hot and heated up I left some chunks in there. I don't mind a few chunks. My kids are the ones who won't like the chunks, so they, I will try to leave the chunks in the pot and I will take the chunks for myself. But the, the smaller pieces will go with the kids to, uh, in the kids' bowls. So now that it's hot and steaming, I'm going to put it into the crock pot. Okay, I am cooking burning this um, whole jalapeno and I'm going to toss it into the crock pot too because jalapenos are also low FODMAP. FODMAP are short chain carbohydrates. Basically sugars that are uh, present in food in, in uh, grains and legumes and fruits and vegetables and there's a thing that gives people IBSD symptoms so the challenge for each IBSD patient is to find out which ones they are sensitive to or which ones they cannot tolerate which short chain uh, carbohydrate group because there are several groups I think one is saccharides and one is polyols, and I forgot the other one. Thank you. 
Now, this is going to be a source of flavor since I'm not able to use garlic and onions like I did before to flavor things. Now we're going to flavor the sauce starting with um, Hunt's 2 tablespoon pouch of tomato paste. Tomatoes are low FODMAP and also um, I'm only using a 2 tablespoons in a big pot so it won't be too much. So it asks for some thyme and some um, Italian style seasonings so I'm just going to use the Italian seasoning and so it asks for uh, Worcestershire and it asks for paprika so I'm going to put a little of each of those in. There it is. I poured it all in. It was all simmered together and I poured it in. Now I'm going to give it a stir so that all, all seasonings will be mixed together. Now, I'm just going to make sure that all flavors go through from top to bottom. Since I layered the flavors, I want to make sure they're all well mixed. And these vegetables still have a lot of liquid in them from um, because they're raw. They were raw when I put them in. Okay, so. There, I want to bury that thing again. <laughs> I want to bury that. Mm. I want to bury that um, jalapeno. Hey, you're peeking out again. Go on down in there. Yeah, I want it to be in under the <laughs> vegetables so the flavor will go in. So. There we go. It's going to cook for the rest of the afternoon until the kids come home from school. And I'm going to make some cornbread, low FODMAP cornbread to go with it. Okay, I'm working on some low FODMAP cornbread. I'm using this uh, yellow cornmeal enriched for this uh, thing. And I'm going to use pumpkin because low... Pumpkin is low FODMAP and it adds the vegetable to the cornbread. I'm going to use some of this coconut milk from uh, Dollar Tree to go in there. I use this, uh, the pumpkin I used is the 100% pure pumpkin solid packed Simple Truth Organic from Kroger and I got it on clearance for 75 cents. I don't remember how much I paid for this yellow cornmeal. I bought it a while ago and I don't remember the price I paid. So I'm starting with a fourth of a cup of um, coconut milk and a cup of pumpkin and a, two cups of um, yellow cornmeal. So I'm going to mix it together and see how that looks. And there, that's... Um, I put two eggs in there because I just remembered all the recipes I read had at least one egg in. If I need more liquid, I'll add more coconut milk because I'm trying to keep it non-dairy. Yep. Not adding any oil because coconut milk has oil in it yeah put a little more coconut milk in okay so far I've added two-thirds cup of coconut milk I'm considering adding another third um, So what I ended up doing was putting the rest of the pumpkin in. I decided to put the rest of the pumpkin in and I'm going to let it sit here until in a little while I'm going to put it in the oven. 
you know, my family really likes sweet cornbread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use coconut sugar because it is low FODMAP. White table sugar is too, but this is also low glycemic. So I have two, two concerns. I want it to be low glycemic as well. Table sugar is not low glycemic. So I have two tablespoons of sugar in here. I think the fourth cup, that means four tablespoons. Yeah, fourth cup of sugar is good. So it is low glycemic and low fat milk, both. Okay, there's something I, I would like to share about making cornbread because I've done it many, 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 many times over the years. And that is that if you let it sit for a while, it will become more fluffy and rise higher. I don't know why, but I know that it does. So I just wanted to let you know that your cornbread will be fluffier and less dense if you let it sit a while. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to make muffins with it or or make uh, cornbread pancakes or hoe cakes to go with our dinner. We'll see. I just opened this and took a whiff. Oh my gosh. Oh, that smell. It smells amazing. Girls and boys and ladies and gentlemen, you will love this recipe. I know it's low FODMAP, but it is. It smells good, and I don't be believe it will dis be a disappointment. We're going to see later today. I, it, the recipe said put some um, flour, uh, gluten-free flour, fod low FODMAP flour. But I said, no, I'm not. Because that I cut the vegetables small enough that, and especially uh, potatoes and um, butternut squash, they will, uh, when they become soft, they will begin to thicken the liquid. What is this? A raisin? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody dropped a raisin there or something. Anyway, I just wanted to let you see. I wish you could smell. But take my word for it. It smells amazing. There it is. Still cooking. Mmm, the smell is delicious. Oh yes. See, I didn't need any. I didn't need to put any flour in there. Let it cook a little longer because the longer the better with beef. I'm gonna spray these more tins with. Cooking, coconut cooking spray from Dollar Tree. There. Ready to put it in. Tell someone to be quiet. It means to tell someone to be quiet. Okay.
Now it's very perfect oh, hell yeah. texture. What's that? It's cornbread muffins. <laughs> Why? I'm not eating. No, just... Really? Did you even pay attention to me? I said, I'm the trigger little brother. Yeah. Okay. What did you buy today? Okay, that goes into the little toaster oven Mom, and cooks. Did you go to the store today? No. Why? There it is, still cooking. Mmm, the smell was delicious. Oh, yes. See? I didn't need any. I didn't need to put any flour in there. Let it cook a little longer because the longer the better with me. I'm going to spray these muffin tins with. cooking coconut cooking spray from Dollar Tree there ready to put it in Tell someone to be quiet. I mean, stuff to tell someone to be quiet. Okay. My mommy <laughs> even said it. You're 12, right? My mom is 45. <laughs> Now it's very perfect oh, hell yeah. texture. What's that? It's cornbread muffins. <laughs> Why? I'm not eating. No, I just really. Did you, did you even pay attention to me? I said I'm the trigger little brother. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What did you buy today? Okay, that goes into the little toaster oven Mom, and cooks. Did you go to the store today? No. Why? Now, this is what I'm doing. I am caramelizing that tomato paste. I've already added the Worcestershire and the paprika. Now I'm going to put water in for the rest of the broth for the soup. I'm going to put a mug of water. I already put one mug, but... I'm putting the second mug now. That's going to be the end of it. No more water. Because the vegetables I put in have a lot of broth already. And I just want to do this. So that's when this uh, is all collected together and nicely uh, spilled <laughs> a little. Uh, probably get my whisk and whisk it in there and melt it all into the liquid and so there are no lumps and then but uh, caramelizing the tomato paste really umps the flavor it gives it a punch it'll pack a punch 
so the whisk is better for getting that mixed together. Now I'm going to add the Italian seasoning. So I put Italian seasoning in it. Now I'm going to mix it all together and it's ready to pour. As soon as it simmers, I'm going to pour it into the crock pot. I learned about caramelizing tomato paste from my uh, Arab friends. I didn't know about that. Mennonites don't caramelize their tomato paste. Everything just gets dumped in. They don't work on building flavor. But it's understandable because many of them have really large families and taking the time to build flavor. Um, is, is, is a waste of time, really. You mash your potatoes, you make your gravy, you boil your vegetables, and everyone eats. And maybe they have a slice of bread. But the Arabic culture takes more time with it. Also put four um, of these little tiny cilantro um, bouillon cubes in because to help season it up without fod maps. Hi guys, I'm Zakia, and today my mom is recording me because um, I'm just eating. What are you eating? Um, soup. With rice and potatoes. Yes, it's true. I'm excited. Uh huh. And don't forget to put your chin over the bowl so you don't drop any on the floor. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm happy to hear. Yeah, I just didn't want the meat inside it. Cause you didn't want the meat? No. Okay. 